Hello everybody, welcome to another video from Code Shots with Profanis. Well, Angular 14 has great features. One of these is the inject method, a new way to apply dependency injection in our Angular applications. We can use this method in various places and we will see more details in the video. So, let's get started. I have created a very simple application and here we can see that we have the menu with the dashboard, products 1 and products 2. And we will work specifically with these two menu items, the products 1 and products 2. And the reason that we have the numbers here is that we have a path parameter, so 1 and 2 respectively. So the first approach is that here in the products component, what we will try to do is to console log the path parameter. So how can we do this? Let's start by injecting into the constructor the activated route. So private activated route, and here we have the activated route. And then we need to console log the activated route. I need to have the snapshot params, and I know that the parameter name is ID. So let's give it a shot. Let's go to the browser to see what we have. So here we have the parameter 2 and in the console here we also see the parameter 2. Nice. So this is how we applied it using the standard dependency injection. So let's now rewrite this and instead of injecting the activated route into the constructor, I will create here a function and I will name it getPathParam and I will provide here a name of type string. And the path param will return a string value. And what we need is to inject the activated route. So let's do this inside the function. So I will create here the const activated route equals, and then I use the method inject. And please note that this is with lower i inject from Angular core. So I will inject the activated route and then I can return the activated route snapshot params and I have to provide here the name of the parameter. So I will remove this now and I will replace the activated route snapshot params ID with my function name get path param and I will provide the name of the parameter. Let's go again to the browser to see what we have and here we can see the number 2 and let's see also if I go here product 2 on and I have of course to reload, we can see that we have the number 1. Nice. So you might be wondering, mm, and how about if I want to subscribe? So let's create another function. I will name it again get path param. But this time I will have here the dollar sign, which denotes that we will return an observable and Let's say that I want to return an observable of type string. And of course, we want here to have the name of type string. Let's copy this, activate it route. And now what we will do is the following. We will return the activated route params.pipe. And we know that we have here a specific parameter name to pick. So let's use the plug method. And I will go on to plug this. And of course, we have to import this. Okay, so let's do this manually. So import the plug operator from RxJS slash operators. And now let's try to use this. Into the constructor, I will delete the console log from here. And I want to use the get path param dollar sign, and then I will subscribe and I will use the console log. So let's go to the browser to see what we have. As we can see, immediately we have the number one, and if I click here into the products two, we can see now that we have the number two. So this is how we use the inject method, and we saw how to use it into the constructor. Let's now give it a try and create another example using the inject into the class, but this time as a field. 
A very common use case is to use a base HTTP class and then extend another class, for example, product service, to extend this base HTTP and use the extended methods. So let's give it a try. I will open a new terminal and I want to create a new service and I will name it base HTTP. And you know what? I want to skip the tests. So let's open the base HTTP service and what we want to have here is the method get. And let's say that we want to have also the method post, the method put, and also the method delete. Nice. So the get method, what we will do is to return the response of uh, an HTTP get request. So of course we need to have into the constructor, let's do this here, the HTTP client. So HTTP client, and now we can be like this HTTP client, and I want to get something, and we have to provide the URL. So the URL is split in two different parts. The first one could be the domain, and the other one could be the URL. So let's create here a private read-only, and I will name it domain, equals this is my domain whatever. So let's try to use this here and it will be this domain and then I need also to have my URL. So you know what? I will convert this class to an abstract one and I will also create here an abstract URL of type string. And in order to get, I want to use my domain slash and then I want to have by this URL. Nice. And of course we need to return this. Now let's create another class which will extend this one, the base HTTP service. So I will create not the base HTTP, but I will create the product service. Okay, so let's go to the product service and this guy should extend the base HTTP service and immediately we will see that we have a prompt which says that non abstract class product service does not implement inherited abstract member URL from class. Okay, so let's do this. Implement the inherited, and I will say that the URL of products is products. And of course, here we need to have the super which uh, invokes the method, the constructor method of the base class. But we have here an error. The error is like that, you know what, this method requires the HTTP client and we have to provide it. So let's do the same here and let's provide it here. Uh, what kind of error do we have here? Yeah, of course, we have to remove this. Now let's give it a try. I will use this product service into my products component. So I will use the standard dependency injection that we use in Angular, right? So private product service, and then I want to inject my product service. And just to make sure that everything works well, I will go here into the constructor and I will be like this product service and I just want to get. And I have also to subscribe. Let's go to the browser to see what we have. So immediately we see that we have a request to this is my domain, we can see it here, slash products. This means that the implementation currently works. But you know what? What I don't like is that in the product service, we have to provide again the HTTP client. So how can we fix this? So let's go to the base HTTP service and let's see how to use the inject method as a field, as a class field. So I will have it like HTTP client equals inject method and I will provide here my HTTP client and I no longer need this. Now I can use my HTTP client which is injected here and if I go back to the product service I no longer need to inject the HTTP client to other classes. Let's go to the browser and it seems that it works fine. So this is a way of how to use the inject method as a class field. Now let's go again to the products component and you know what? 
So I will comment this out, I will comment this out, and this as well. You know what? Let's delete them. And now let's see something more. We said that we can use the inject method, like here with the activated route and the HTTP client, but how about if I'm going to use the inject method in a custom injection token? Let's try this. So I will create my logger token here, which is equals to a new injection token, and I have to provide here my generic type. So for this reason, I will create an interface and I will name it logger. And this logger has just one method, the log, which accepts one parameter and the name is value and the type is string and returns void. So the new injection token is of type logger and I will provide here a description, which is the logger injection token. And also I can provide a default implementation. So the factory of these will be a function which will return what? The log. And the log will be just the console log. Now, how can we use this, the logger token? Let's go to the constructor, into the body of the constructor, and I will create here my logger equals to inject the logger token. And I can even select the log method. Now, if I use the logger here by providing something, a value, we would expect to see this value into the console. So let's go to the browser. And here it is. How about now if I want to override the default implementation? So I don't want to use the default factory, but I want to use my own factory. Let's have the providers here. And I will be like, I want to provide my logger token. And I'm going to change the factory for this. So I will provide a new factory. And this is going to be a function which will return the log. And the log will be a new function which will accept a value of type string and will return something. So let's say console log. But this time, just to make sure that everything works just fine. I will have here this arrow and I will provide my value. So what we expect now is to see into the console the value, but this time with uh, this kind of arrow. And this is it. Since now we have a new factory here, we can use the inject even into the use factory. So let's give it a try. I will do the following. I will create here a const HTTP equals to inject HTTP client, and now most probably I can use this here. So whenever I use the logger token, I want to send a message to my server. This is just an example to demonstrate how to use the inject method. So I will be like HTTP, I want to post something, and this is my logger domain, and I have to provide some, let's have here domain, and I'm going to provide my body. So my body will be just the value. And of course, we we'll have to subscribe this. Let's also use here uh, the first. Again, this is just for explaining how to use the inject method into the factory. So what we expect now to see is that, so whenever we use the logger function, we expect a new HTTP post to send to a server with this domain, the logger domain. And this is it. So we can see that we have the logger domain. And if we go to the network, we can see the details that we send a value with the message a value. The inject method is very powerful. And please know that we can use the inject method only during the class creation and initialization. Having said that, it's too late to use it in the on init method or any other hook that runs after the initialization. So that was it. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell. See you in the next video.